So now we're on page one. House meaning. There's a page that says house <laughs> meaning. Say again. What does this mean? <laughs> we're just getting started. Okay. So we went over the first four of these. Those external significations. First is body. Now use the um, the best way to uh, the best way to memorize the signs is to use the South Indian. The best way to memorize the houses is to use the North Indian. <laughs> to, so draw a North Indian chart and, and fill that in and take your notes on a North Indian chart. So that first house is your body and your health and everything associated with that. The second house is your wealth, your sustenance. The second to anything is always that which is sustaining the first. Effort comes from the third house. Your home comes from the fourth. The fifth house, it's chitta. It shows the mind field and your intelligence. Uh, how come the first house is sometimes used for intelligence? What's the difference? Not the first house, the lagna, lord. The lagna. Okay, the lagna. The lagna lord. Mm -hmm. I've heard the lugna. They, I mean, it's telling you actually said so that the lugna is... It's, it's Paka Lugna, okay. particularly. Paka Lugna is where the Lugna Lord is placed. Let's talk about that when we get to the Lords of Houses, or else we're jumping ahead for right. everyone else. Fifth house, it, it shows your intelligence, your general ability to make decisions. <coughs> How smart you are. I looked at a chart the other day. I was like, wow, this guy's smart. He graduated from Yale. I don't have one of those. George <laughs> Bush graduated from Yale. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, he did. He's president, though. He's smarter than me. Yeah. Somehow. Um, <laughs> if I could be president, he's a better rock. He's a better rock. Being smart or a good ruler doesn't make you president. the karma. <laughs> That's for sure. And we six, sixth house <laughs> is the house of enemies. Eighth house is the house of debt. It's, it's a negative house. It's a minusing house. Ninth house is gurus and teachers. Tenth house is karma, your career, your occupation. Karma means the work that you're doing. The eleventh house is the house of gains, what you're getting. Twelfth house, it's it's the opposite. You have 11th gains, 12th is losses. Loss of time, loss of, of country, foreign land, loss of your uh, freedom to do whatever you want, living in an ashram, loss of health, a hospital. <laughs> About what? <laughs> your what is? <laughs> Are place there or transiting? No, place. Place there. You're going to lose your sorrow. Venus, Venus <laughs> is fine there. <laughs> Venus is good there. You lose your sorrow. Um, <laughs> if we turn it and we look at that same <laughs> chakra as, as uh, people, the first house is you. Always you. We're going to be talking about divisional charts. Every divisional chart, the first house is always you. Second house, is close family. And at that level, it's who's around us. Basically, it's when we're younger. When we're growing up. Who are the people that are around us when we're growing up? They're seen by the second house. If you have Saturn there, there's a bunch of poor people around you. Jupiter there, a bunch of rich people around you as you're growing up. What's the situation as you're growing up? Jack has uh, got Saturn in the second year born and raised in a, comp not a, comp a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. Everybody was totally poor. Mm -hmm. World War II. So it doesn't say about the person themselves being poor or it just says about the people around them? If your family? You probably like I, my parents, you know, they, were c they came from two different religions and so were both disowned when they got married. Oh, both sides were disowned. Oh yeah. You mean like Jewish and Catholic? Yeah. <coughs> and so, you know, the, the Christian side of my father's family and the Jewish side of my mother's family were like, you can't, you know, and so 
And yeah. that's Saturn in the second for you? Well, they went off, and so they started with nothing. Yeah. You know, so like. Saturn in the second yeah, as well? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you know, when I was growing up, it was quite. Jack of the we were quite lacking. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, well, see, and I have Robert in second. I was tra- traveling all the time because uh-huh. my father was in the Air Force, yeah. and so I grew up in foreign countries. Now, interesting thing, my brother, he has a benefit in the second house, and he, my, my younger brother. So, you know, by the time I got to high school and I went away to college, all of a sudden my parents got more prosperous. So he had a better, you know, he had a totally different mm-hmm. kind of situation when he went through school than when I had. Mm-hmm. But that's how the, yeah, so... So whenever I look at someone's chart, they're like, oh, look, I just had a child born. I see Saturn in the second house, or I see, you know, I'm just like, oh, oh well, no. this kid is bringing some hardship for you, or this kid is, <laughs> you know, you see somebody, they have Jupiter in their second house with their, their child. Oh, the kids brought prosperity to the house. Uh-huh. Yeah. For the whole family. For the whole family. Yeah. If the kid's karma is to be in a prosperous family, oh, yeah. then, you know, the prosperity is coming. It's, a, it's an omen. Yeah. The child is the omen. It's all interconnected, interrelated. So I could, because my sister has said it in a second, I could look and see if her family changed in prosperity when she got born, yeah. my younger sister. Yeah. That would there, be there, there probably was harder times during that period of her birth year. And it's only a few years different, but you know, those dashes are going to be shown in your parents' chart as harder years for them. So that's close, so close family in that that those who are in the home with you, who are being affected by that. Third house is siblings, brothers, sisters. Now notice that the brothers and sisters are connected to the effort, the external signification of effort. And uh, anybody who knows anything about psychology, they talk a lot about sibling order, birth order. Mm -hmm. That the youngest has a certain way of acting. Mm -hmm. The the oldest is supposed to be the most... um, Anybody know the exact? The oldest is supposed to be the most responsible and in charge, and the youngest has a certain way of acting. Kind of like mm-hmm. They're like the... the entitled. Entitled? I thought it yeah. was more the like the... Um, the baby, the favorite, or yeah, something. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're also the most independent, and they also risk more, more, more things in the family order. Mm-hmm. So, so Western psychology has discovered this. Mm-hmm. But if we look at the Jyotish chart, the house of brothers and sisters and the house of your effort and courage mm. are the same. Mm. So Jyotish has said they're always the same. What's happening? When I look, when I see a planet there that's giving brothers and sisters, that's also giving the way they're acting. When I see something that's making them not have brothers and sisters, it's also showing me a way that they're acting. So all the way that the brothers and sisters are acting? Towards the, no, the way that they are. They're, what their brothers and sisters whether you're the firstborn, the secondborn, the thirdborn, how your brothers and sisters are, whether you have a brother or a sister, is going to affect how you, how, what your effort, what your third house is. It's the house of parakrama, how you get things, your effort, your energy to make what things if happen. What there's nothing there? <coughs> there's still a, a sign there. Okay. I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest of five. Uh-huh. And I have two sisters and a third one. Parakrama is... Parakrama. Means... Gemini. Um, energy, effort. The oomph to get things done. Will, like mm-hmm. will. Will. So, so, let me see if I can... I'm not quite getting this. The, the, um, something about the sibling and your order in the birth order. I'm just saying that Western psychology says the birth order with the sibling. This is Western psychology. And if we look from the Vedic perspective, we see that those are the, the same house. Your parakrama and your siblings are the same energy. They're coming, th- what is determining them is the same. Where Western psychology has, has seen this, mm-hmm. totally without looking at a chart, they've discovered this separate. But we already knew that they were always the same. Okay? That's, the, that's what I'm... I'm basically just showing you that this ra- the, the houses show us that they're always related. Mm-hmm. Where Western psychology is just discovering that they're related. That's the important aspect mm-hmm. to remember. If we look at the fourth house, it's the mother. So the mother is related to the home. 
So that means the home life, whether a person has a stable home, not a stable home, all that is connected to their mother and how they were raised. I haven't heard anything in, in Western psychology studied about this, but give it a few years and they will. It's the mother's fault. <laughs> <laughs> you do talk about that a lot. Like this, is, complex. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is what the, the mother is affecting our sense of Our home and our home life. Mm-hmm. <coughs> then we see the fifth house is showing children and students. And this is connected to our intelligence. Sixth house. Um, as people, it shows servants, pets, as well as enemies. I'm giving you the nicer <laughs> side there. The seventh house is spouse, which on the external level is connected to business. Which, if you... Huh? K2. K2. So if you think back in the ancient days, you know, when marriages were arranged, it was based on, you know, oh, so you have this trade, I have that trade, but our businesses would be good coming together, let's get our kids married. Um, eighth house, the people it shows as lenders. Also, people that don't like you are sh- seen from the eighth house. How's that different from enemies? Yeah. Doesn't enemies are trying to do something to you? It's a little different than people that don't like you. Mm-hmm. Enemies trying to do something to you. They're putting an effort into like being not nice to you. And, and lenders are just people you owe money to. Yeah, lenders are just people you owe money to. Not personal. Right? Not personal. Yeah, it's not personal. Um, ninth house. Ninth house is connected to father as well as guru. I don't know why I don't have guru there. Very important to put guru there. After father? Yeah. We got guru in, in the first category. Yeah. It says guru teacher. Oh, okay. Guru teacher. teacher and on that side father, mm-hmm. sure. Um, tenth house shows the boss as well as the biological father. Mm. So what's the difference between the biological <laughs> father and the ninth house father? Well, the ninth house father could be a stand-in. Could, could be, be a stand-in? Mentor. Could be a father figure. Could be a father figure. What? Like a mentor. What mm. allows that person to be called a father. If they're a teacher. Like you get your values from them. They guide you. Oh, they're older male. <laughs> 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 and then, so, so they deserve the title of father. No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. No, that's called the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture is very specific. The one who, who raised Scripture is you, very specific. sustained you when you were growing up. Okay. Mental, uh, mentally, mm-hmm. emotionally. Close, but not the right word. Ninth house. One who, who gave, allowed you to prosper. Your spiritual authority, your authority on your church and state. The guru is the spiritual authority. And the, guru, the person who teaches you what to do in that. Protects the Dharma. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's about Sagittarius. Sagittarius, remember, is connected to as well to the um, military. Did somebody leave something on? It's cooking. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Remember that Sagittarius is also connected to infantry and the army. Okay. The actual, you know, military might. It's, it's a very protective energy, the ninth house. So, the one that protects you while you're growing up, who provides that protection, and who teaches you the Dharma, that's the father. The Shastra is very specific. The one who provides protection is the father. Mm-hmm. So, tenth house shows biological father, but the ninth house is that one that's actually there protecting you. A child is, is not protected on their own. A child needs protection. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the definition of, of father. Mm-hmm. Vedically. Eleventh house, friends. As people, they're what we gain in life. We gain friends. All the rest we're stuck with. <laughs> it's not our fault. We gain, if we get good gains, we have lots of friends. Nothing is as valuable as good friends. Is, is the second house ever friends? Mm, you know, it's close family. So 
so it's not like you, there's there's friends that you're friends with because they're there, and then there's the friends that you're friends with because you want to be friends with them. Okay. Eleventh is more those friends that you mm. you yeah you're choosing them, you want them in your life, like you 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 feel lucky that they're there with you. Second house and fourth house are friends that are you know fourth house you just ha- they're your, they happen to live in the same house with you, so you're friendly or with them. Or neighborhood, yeah. Second house, they're just they're there in in your your kula, okay. you know. So you're friends with them at that level. Mm. Seventh house is kula, like your community. Second, second, second. Yeah. Second. Second. Yeah. 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 What is kula? Family. Yeah. Like extended family kula. Those who are just living. Oh right. That's why they call the Dharma house the Kula house. Oh right. It's the Dharma family. Those who are your Dharma family. Wait, second house isn't the Dharma house. No, there's a place. I'm talking about a place. There's actually a place called the Dharma house in Berkeley. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they also call it the Kula house. Okay. It's either or. Okay. Uh, or your roommate? Would your roommates be second house? They can fit into your second house or your fourth, depending. The second's going to show more younger, your earlier life. When you were a kid. Yeah. Growing up. And it might be somebody who just happens to be there. You know, like let's say you lived in a, your, your family lived in a small apartment complex where the families were kind of more integrated. Then that's showing that level. There's still, you know, I mean... My parents lived in an apartment we lived with. There was two Israelis that lived in the apartment up next, above us. But, you know, I spent probably more time with them than with my own mother. You know, so they, they were my second house in that way. Um, okay, and twelfth house, bill collectors. Those who call you loss. So this is enemies in people that actually have caused you loss. So 8th house is those who don't like you. 6th house is those who are trying to do negative things to you. 12th house is those who have actually done negative things to you. They've caused the loss of reputation. They've caused the loss of money. They've caused this this loss. (coughs) Then we look at the body. 1st house is head. 2nd house is throat. 3rd house is arms and shoulders. 4th house is chest and breast. Fifth is solar plexus, sixth is lower abdomen, seventh is the pelvic region, eighth is genitals, ninth is thighs, tenth is knees, eleventh is calves, and twelfth is feet. It's just like the signs. Just like the natural order of the signs. Okay? From the first house like Aries. Second house is like Taurus when it comes to the body parts. Okay, I have a question now. Why yeah. is it that when you're it's so weird to bring this up, but I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. Is why, like a man's penis, is you look to the ruler of the seventh house. Mm-hmm. We look at the seventh house when it's the pelvic region. Why don't you look to the ruler of the eighth house to look at the eighth house for genitals? What's the difference? Um, you know, some people just use eighth house as the anus uh-huh. only okay. and use the seventh house. When it comes to um, sexual astrology, uh-huh. at that point, we're going to be using the seventh house for the genitalia. Okay. When it comes to more health-related stuff, we're going to use a little bit more of the, uh, you know, the, the eighth house mm-hmm. okay. to show sexual disease. Okay. But when it comes to, I mean, the size, you know, of, of the penis, when it comes to, you know, the scriptures talk about the taste of the vagina, the mm-hmm. shape of the vagina, like all that seventh house. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, from a digestion level, even, if we look at Scorpio, and that'd be a nice one to put in here. So no digestion. Um, from the digestion level, first house is your mouth. You put the food in. Mm-hmm. Second house is the, esoph- the, the, mm-hmm. the throat going down. Um, third is the esophagus. You know, then it goes down into the fourth, which is your stomach. And then the fifth, it starts going into the small intestines the solar plexus area. And then six, it's starting to go into the, um, six and seventh, it's going into the large intestines. Mm. And at the eighth house, that's your anus coming out. 
So if we look at digestion in that way, the eighth house, really it's, you know, the, the guha is the, the one, we'll get into, I translate it sans, uh, the um, Sanskrit from Parasha, and the word he uses is guha, which literally means cave. Gula? Guha. 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 The secret place. It can mean cave or the secret place. So it can mean just your anus. And the secret place, it can mean, you know, as well the genitals. So is there anything past that? Sagittarius? <laughs> Once we get to Sagittarius, we've passed the Gandanta. Uh-huh. There's not digestion happening from there. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's based on these Gandantas. Well, the Gandanta you pass uh, between cancer and... Cancer, cancer, but that's the diaphragm. And there's a, only a small little tube that goes through the diaphragm. Oh, I see. So that's the diaphragm. Yeah, that Gandanta points oh, the diaphragm. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, okay. So, and then 12th house is the feet. So internal. First house shows our strength. Second house shows our speech. So if we looked at it from digestion, it was our mouth. You, you know, it's, it's the mouth, the swallowing, the chewing, the food. From the second, it's our speech, what's coming out of our mouth. Um, third house is courage. Vikrama. Fourth house. Vikrama? Vikrama. What's in the you know Vikram? You know Vikram? Vikram? He lives in Palo Alto area. Yeah. Vikram. That's his name. Vikrama. Vikrama. Parakrama? Parakrama is a little bit more the energy you're using to get things. Vikrama is courage. Okay. It's just, okay. So that's Parakrama is a very broad concept that there's really no English word to translate. You kind of got to understand the meaning. Vikrama, you can say, is courage. Vikrama. Isn't that one of the names we did when we were doing the forms of addition to the tree Vikramaya? Tree Vikramaya. No. Okay. Is it Parakrama? Parakrama. Krama. It's written down here at oh, some okay. point. Okay. Fourth house. It's your emotions, your feelings. If there's malefic planets there, the person has a lot of hardship. If there's benefits there, the person feels a lot of good feelings in their life. Uh-huh. What do you got in the fourth? Uh-huh. Saturn and Jupiter. Yeah, Saturn and Jupiter. Saturn and Jupiter. So a lot of suffering, a lot of blessings. <laughs> happy <laughs> and sad. We, we got the happiest planet and the saddest planet. Both are there. Mars is there. Well, it's a lot of angry feelings that we <laughs> have to digest. It's also the stomach, you know, and, and digestion-wise. So it's a lot of feeling, a lot of angry feelings we got to digest. Is, is it also sure. with the mother then too? Like, is it how the mother felt or something? It's, it's all. You see, it's all connected. It's yeah. all connected. It's 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 all connected. Use the sign. Use the sign and the aspect. You have more rock. The Saturn and the fourth is kind of a mother's 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 a little bit. For the person, it makes the person a little bit more lonely. For the mother, it makes the mother a little bit harsh, a little bit colder. Saturn's a cold planet. He's vata, he's dry and cold. So if there's no planet, there you take the aspect? Aspect first and then the sign. Yeah, the button. Yeah. And then Rashi, then Graha. Oh, Rashi, then, then Graha. Oh, For this, it's feeling, so you're going to, on, on a superficial level, the person's going to feel the Graha aspects more. Mm-hmm. If we get down to a deeper level, the Rashi aspects are going to be more what's actually happening. Oh, right. <coughs> so, fifth house, Pratibha. It's one of my favorite words. <laughs> Pratibha. 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 So does it mean directly intuition or is, is there a different meaning? That's the best word, you know? <laughs> intuition. <laughs> but it has this concept of, you know, we can say, you could say intuition, but it's that higher guidance. Intuition is kind of saying that it's coming from inside. Is it coming from inside or is it coming from outside? Where is it really, you know, in, intuition is in. It's, in, it's saying it's inside. Pratipa, you know, they say comes from the guru. But the guru, when the inner guru has been awakened in you, 
-hmm. That's Pratipa. When the inner guru is guiding you. So there's a relationship between intuition and your intestines. <laughs> there must be. Yeah. The gut, gut feeling. Your gut yeah, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Gut, gut there you yeah. go, your gut feeling. That's why you know it in your gut. <laughs> yes. You feel it in your heart, but you know it in your gut. Lots of nerves in the digestive system. Mm. So it's connected mm. to the brain. But do you see how the, the houses are showing us what in life is connected? Mm -hmm. And it's very obvious that it is connected. The gut's not connected to your, your courage. It's connected to the intuition here. Mm. So you see, where at the same time the courage, if we look at the part of the body, that's the arms. I mean, how many courageous warriors are showing off their big muscles? <laughs> <laughs> but but we we got to see these how they're all they're showing us what in life fits under the same vibration of existence. Sixth house, it's the enemies. What are the enemies on that internal level? Your, your enemies are your bad habits <laughs> on an inside level. Seventh house, desires. Why would the pets be with your enemies? Mm. The pets are actually good things to prevent enemies. Oh, okay. uh -huh. Because I yeah. pets positive. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're balancing out. You, you, feed, you feed your cat, and it's, what do we do for enemies, to get rid of enemies? You feed animals. You feed. You feed. The, the, the feeding is about yeah. remedies to get rid of enemies. That's yeah. when we use feeding. Oh. Feeding is based on mm -hmm. six house. Six house remedies are feeding. Mm -hmm. So you get this cat and you feed it every day. It's it's almost a a remedy for yeah. Oh. But now pets can be servants to you as well. They can be servants as so well. And isn't Saturn the na one of the natural rulers of the sixth house? So Caracas. We'll get Caracas. to that. So. Um, then we have, where are we? Seven. Eighth house. Seven. Desires. We, just, we got that desire. Um, eighth house, it's your vulnerable area. Mm. It's where you feel vulnerable. Planets in the eighth house feel vulnerable. Mm. The moon hates the eighth house because it feels the uh, emotions are very vulnerable there. And emotions are something that should be protected, not vulnerable. Mm. What about Rahu there? Rahu? Mm -hmm. Do your, your desires feel vulnerable? Um, your obsession still vulnerable. <laughs> You're more vulnerable to your obsessions. <laughs> okay. You're, you're vulnerable your obsessions hit you in the vulnerable area. Uh -huh. you're, you're vulnerable about your vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> Ninth house, <laughs> Dharma. <laughs> um, tenth house, respect. Eleventh house, what you gain on an internal level. Achievement. <laughs> And 12th house, sleep, rest, meditation, 